yes so to begin with our ivc okay indus valley civilization so this is our ancient india part we are talking about so last two years before they had asked a question on ivc okay then they got exhausted they went to architecture and now they're still in architecture now this year maybe religion okay one standard area religion or vedic literature is what you know we can you know subtly predict is what we can say and the, so now why do we have to study ivc fine why do we have to study ivc i i told you like ivc is a very ancient time period what is the time period that ivc existed 4000 bc ivaga recent excavation some two years before we had an excavation which said that ivc existed 8000 bc earlier okay so with recent excavations we go backward and backward but in the textbook still we find it from 4000 or 3500 bc is what we see okay now 3500 bc's civilization why do we have to study now what is so unique about them what's so nice about them that we have to know yeah okay so and one more thing is to know about it first thing is like she said town planning is what you know the first point that strikes to us that is like they they town planning how well they manage their cities like bangalore is one of the cities which is not really well planned is what we say right or not because of its like you know humongous uh, uh, expansion okay unplanned you know uh, concretization and the health we so many buildings which are not regularized which which do not have permissions to exist right on lake encroachment lot of problems traffic management nandu vehicle scrappage policy is like a boon to a city like bangalore right or not so like when we go to other states for classes and all no first thing they'll mock about us is like you know airport in the if we have to go to uh, one of the destinations it is as much as like you know we travel from the city to your town right or not so if chennai and bangalore if i took like say so much time that double the time i have to take to reach your house right or not so that's one traffic management is what we are very much struggling with right or not and our sewage management is not good right ella keregalalli we have constructed of houses now once it rains we are all drowned right or not so we are not happy about our town planning right so ivc is known for that right so basically from ivc what we can learn is first thing is how to manage your your space of living okay town planning and the help of okay how do you develop your city or place of dwelling what is place of dwelling where we live that's called as place of dwelling okay so how do we develop it how scientific it should be okay if you take a look at them we will see okay now town planning madbekar will take a look at them they are so beautiful even now you can just not imagine that okay 3500 bc people had such advanced you know techniques they had sewer lines connected to main sewer line at the you know main gates okay how you know bright the technology could be at that point okay see we now we might feel like okay we have robot for mopping the house now okay this this day 21st century we have that but 3500 bc think about it alva so that is one thing that we should be very proud of to learn about ivc so first thing is we have urban slums okay so generally how do you have a city development is one cbd irutte it is called a central business district okay ivaga it could be our uh, what's that mg road okay or majestic okay they are all our cbds anta helbodu cbd andre central business district where there is absolute business activity happening okay na so around this there definitely will be slums there definitely will be slums why workers illi bekagiro group 3 and 4 level workers are required to stay in the vicinity of the place of work okay so now how do you manage this now generally the posh owners of these yav tar areas alle reside maartare they will reside in residential outlays i mean out uh, layouts their lay their residential uh, layouts yav tar irutte imagine one of the like you know any of the poshest areas in uh, bangalore dagoli okay so dashram nagar it could be or it could be the dollars colony okay anywhere okay anywhere in in core mangal also one of the sections okay so how how, how are they you know their their houses constructed very spacious they are not congested there are lot of greens 
Yes, lot of greens, wide roads, 80 feet roads do exist there. Two-way traffic movement availability there. Dividers are there, well lighted. Yes, so, and what kind of shops exist in these kind of areas? All malls in Bodo, or it could be like, you know, uh, anything where people don't worry about the purchase cost. Okay, that kind of people live in these areas. So generally, these people do not live here. They generally live at external circle of the hugely populated region. Okay, so now what happened? We have already encroached these areas. Now there is no space. We are going further and further. We have gone off till Malur also now. Right or not? Bidadi has gone. Bidadi is proper Bangalore now. Now Malur is the outskirt of Bangalore. Yes, kilometers. They go to like 65 to 70 kilometers from Bangalore is Malur. Right or not? So that is Bangalore now. Right? So now, how do you deal with your urban slums? What is the problem of urban slums? Because they don't have infrastructure. Right? First of all, they have a very small house. Okay? That too, it may not be a concrete house. Paka house in other urbodo. Okay? So, uh, their infrastructure is not well developed. They don't get clean drinking water. They don't get enough water, sanitation facilities. Okay? And they are not educated. Yes? So, with the non-education, what happens? Criminal activities may breed. Okay, now the trend is changing. Now the trend is changing. Check out, like, you know, slums Ali, like if you take when we were very small, okay, now if you take 20, 30 years back and all, no, slums were the places where there was, you know, breeding of criminal activity, which is not the case now, where people are educated. Everybody is a graduate now. Everybody is a damn graduate. Okay, trends are changing. Okay, so we see a lot of uh, papers Ali, articles Ali, there so many. No, but reservations are needed. Yeah, exactly. So it's good, Allah. It's in a way like, you know, whatever is given for them, it is being utilized by them, right? So it's a good, uh, you know, walk towards progressive development. So slums, Ali, you have problems like this. Okay, the security issue is one thing. And another thing is, there is no equity. What is the difference between equality and equity? Reservation. If I can now say, for example, if I come from a particularly a backward community, if, okay, now why am I allowed to take a reservation in the schools and colleges? Why am I given like a reservation in the things? In our KPSC prelims means reservations there. Yes or no? Why that reservation is needed? First thing is my ancestors have faced exploitation. Okay, now if your ancestors have faced exploitation, why am I at this generation who's got good you know, uh, education who's got a very, uh, you know, quality, uh, very good quality of life. But why do you deserve reservation? That is something which we have to debate about because, you know, we have a lot of exploitation through reservation system. But otherwise, why reservation is justified is because of this reason only. The system at the outset, we might feel that, okay, they are all doing equally good compared to the other category people. But when you actually look deeper into the societal structure, no, they are still not equal to the other categories. Okay. So generally equity is giving people certain preferences. Okay. Certain people are in an affirmative action. Okay. Reservations are called as affirmative actions. So basically you give them, you give few sections or few people little more advantage to come up to the other category of people. Okay. Now if I have 10 apples and or if I have like say 20 apples, I give five each is equality. And if I feel that, okay, one girl is malnourished and I give her seven apples and I feel another girl is also malnourished and I give her like eight apples and you guys are doing well. If it is like that, then I give the rest of it to you people. That is called as equity. Different people are treated differently because of their situations. That is called as equity. So when you try to give reservations, what are we trying to do? We want everybody to have a equal life. So equity will bring equality. So urban slums will have to be dealt with because we need a resolution for that. Okay, we are giving them, you know, reservations because we want to treat them equally at a later date. Someday they will become equals to our other category people. Okay, so first thing is slums develop the Hague Norko Bekuanta. We can learn from IVC people. Okay, and second thing is internal peace. Okay, now, okay, now if you take. Uh, in, in, not generally in South India, we see 
in north india or in tamil nadu also in some cases we have seen riots do happen okay if you take uh, godra riots or bodu okay or muzaffar nagar uh, riots it could be okay so if you take all those things they are mainly instability in the local administration state level administrationally instability is there okay so for different reasons there is lack of internal peace what is internal peace we are fighting amongst each other right or not what is the problem in fighting amongst each other we are wasting our valuable resources in attending to immediate emergency akka pakka manegalalle if we have problem then how are we going to progress as a state as a nation we have larger problems at the national level so maintaining the internal peace is very important and one more big problem for india as a diverse country the problem as well as the advantage both we are very different okay area area go difference in the state state go difference there and we are like you know huge amount of people with lot of different cultures and traditions how do you hold them together that we can learn from ivc okay they never had anything like a war as such there was very strong central authority okay by the way you see their structures their uh, granaries tax collection systems and all no we understand that there existed somebody very powerful at the center for all these activities to happen very periodically and organized way got it yes so that's internal peace and self sustainable economy see ivc people do have you know they did have trade internal both internal as well as the external trade but still beyond that they took care of a self sustaining economy what is self sustaining economy Uh, ha you don't have much of the dependence on external people for what you need in your country okay so now are we self sustainable what is the difference between self sufficient and self sustainable see self sufficiency is nothing but you are no more dependent on external people that is self sufficient economy which is practically not possible in 21st century okay now when you take this indian national movement in history you will largely not see south indians participation especially karnataka people's participation is little less okay kerlaites don't even ask okay very little the idea is our economy was very strong and we were people who had self sufficient economy at that time and we had trade with south east that's a different thing altogether but when i say self sufficient it largely means that we do not need any support from external trade okay we are able to sustain our demand and supply with whatever we have resources we have the strategic resources available for ourselves and we are able to sustain the supply and demand with whatever we have okay that is self sufficient okay this is practically not possible at least in no it is naturally not possible in any economy okay so the quality of life will get impacted we do not have much of choices is to the international brands have come right or not like you know in our day to day life also we have a lot of international brands that we depend on right or not so the food we eat the biscuits we eat everything is mostly from international brands right or not so that way practically self sufficient is not possible but self sustainable economy this is what we need here okay that means we have to extract resources we have to use our resources in such a way that it is not exhausted and at the same time they are utilized at the optimum level you get that yes so self sustainable economy so they had strategic ports strategic dockyards okay at lothal okay at uh, gujarat okay lothal it could be or it could be in uh, different Moh- mohanjadaro okay at different places they had different types of ports roper in punjab okay they had strategic dockyards where they saved sufficient lothalally we have such huge you know granary setup mainly for external trade okay na so that is what it means by self sustainable okay self sustainable means you utilize for today and you also think about tomorrow in self sufficiency what we are doing is we are supplying based on the demand without thinking about how we can do it tomorrow okay so what is the main idea of having exports and imports it is striking a balance that is not all the countries across the world have same amount of resources or same type of resources right or not 
ಫೈನ್ ಸೊ ನಾವ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಫಿಶಿಯಂಟ್ ಇವಾಗ ಆಯಿಲ್ ರಿಸರ್ವ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ತಗೊಂಡ್ರೆ ಲೈಕ್ ಗಲ್ಫ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಎಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ದೇರ್ ಆಯಿಲ್ ರಿಸರ್ವ್ಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ವಿ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ದಟ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಯಿಲ್ ರಿಸರ್ವ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದೆನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡು ವಿ ಡೂ ವಿ ಇಂಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದೆಮ್ ಸೊ ನ್ಯಾಚುರಲ್ ಲಾ ಆಫ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಡ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ನಾವ್ ವಿತ್ ಟ್ರೇಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಡೂ ವಿ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಸ್ಟ್ರೈಕ್ ಅ ಬ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ all over the world all the services and resources are available to make this happen we need to have trade right or not so to strike that universal balance everybody is getting everything okay so for that purpose we need trade and with that we need self sustaining economy you get that yes so this is very much fine in our ivc and lastly religion was a personal affair in indus valley civilization we do not see any kind of a religious sect that existed in indus valley civilization okay this is very much important yes or no for a country like india why for a country like india diversity of religion okay and diversity of sub uh, divisions of each one of the religion right or not so intolerance and uh, you know kind of assimilation and all should not happen okay majority absorbing the minority minority rights will have to be protected for all these reason we have to treat religion as a personal affair and this is very much well ingrained in our constitution in itself religion is a personal affair right or not nowhere it is mentioned that you have to abide by a particular religion or you have to abide by a particular sectoral division nothing like that right so religion is a very very personal affair in ivc and that we get to know through their you know different uh, idea towards religion okay now so now why we have to read ivc for these reasons okay i want you all to write down these things first thing is how to handle urban slums and second thing is to maintain the internal peace third one is self sustaining economy and fourth one is your religion being treated as a personal now let's get into ivc these are the facts that we should know about ivc about indus valley civilization is a bronze age civilization we call it as okay now maybe in a question only bronze age civilization one of the bronze age civilizations but explain what i am going to you do not panic you know that it's about ivc only got it yes so we have this different ages which i have not told you like that becomes too much to think about is what i thought like stone ages ice ages stone ages and then bronze age all those come okay copper age and then bronze age comes into the picture so we are more concerned only from the bronze age phase at that that is ivc and another thing is chalcolithic period one thing is 3300 to 1300 bc and then bronze age then chalcolithic period and this harappa existed on ravi and mohenjodaro on the banks of indus see here this is india map okay the northern part and harappa existed on the banks of ravi it will come here okay indus systemally we have five rivers yes any idea which are they satluj right so we have five rivers see here jhelum jhelum chenab ravi bs and satluj e five rivers now we call it as indus river system right or not so ravi bank ravi banksali you you see this harappa and uh, indus banksali you will see your mohanjodaro site i will show where exactly they exist also so the name in itself came from that only indus river system bankali they exist agadrindane it is called as indus valley civilization okay indus river ke there was another name what is it sindhu sindhu river anta heltare kelavond kade okay so that is what it is so one is on the banks of ravi another one on the banks of your indus why we are mainly talking about these two these are the most prominent sites because you, these are the sites which were excavated at the earliest first site to be excavated was harappa hence it's called as harappan civilization also got it yes so first harappa was excavated by dr i mean d r sahani and the second mohanjodaro was excavated by r d banerji facts required for prelims why it is called ivc because one thing is indus river around it developed okay all the settlements developed around indus and hence it's called as indus valley civilization it's called harappan civilization because the first site to be excavated was harappan and hence it's called as harappan civilization okay this is about the naming ivc and harappan then third one is agro pastoral community this is very important ivc people were mostly agro 
pastoral. What does that mean? Agro andre we know. Agriculture. Alva, what is pastoral? So they parallelly had animals, animal rearing as an activity. Okay, animal rearing was found here. This is something new to us at this point of time. Okay, 3500 BCLE. If we talk about animal rearing, that is something interesting at that point of time. Why? Because we were hunters and gatherers. And so what did we do? We kept on wandering from one place to another. Nomadic life with too. Yes. So we were moving from one place to another. Hunting animals. Okay. Now, if we talk about hunting now, what is that that come to your eyes now? All guns and everything. At least now it is not really permitted. Hunting is an activity hobby. Imagine what year time alala, hunting was there. Right or not? Mysore uh, state, what year uh, dynasty alala. So what that comes to your mind? Generally, all those huge guns. Nam, uh, Dr. Rajkumar pictures alala namge naapka barate. Right or not? Those huge guns where he was a forest officer, forest conservator. Atar adu we get to, uh, you know, imagine. Right or not? Where there are guns. Technical equipments are available to hunt down the animals. So 3500 BCLE, do you think guns existed? No. So how hunting would have been then? Stones. Stones, spelt stones. Stone tools. Okay. No, that happened a little later, no. Like, you know, say, if we let's go back a little, little more, you know. Uh, uh, backwards. So, how the hunting could have been, evolution of hunting I'm talking about. See, they would have faced some struggle and then they would have come up with sharp tools. Alva. So, before that, how they could have hunted? The evolution of hunting. Generally, how it used to happen is, when the animals kept on moving, they followed the animals from the higher elevations. Mountainous regions only. And then they tried to lift the huge stone and drop it on the animals. Okay, whatever form they are available at later, like they consumed it. Okay, do you remember that, you know, men, like, you know, till recently were, you know, uh, recognized with lifting huge stones. That sport, have you ever seen in old movies where men lift huge, you know, heavy, humongous stones to show their, uh, you know, manliness, muscul uh, you know, muscular power. That is from here only. Whoever, whichever person of the tribe could lift the huge stone, the heaviest stone, he was the, like, treated as the head. Now, if you take, there are some movies where they go to the, you know, jungle life. Okay, Salpa, when they go to this tribal living and all, you will see one person who is being leading the tribe. So, who is he generally? The most fittest and most ablest guy. Right or not? So, that comes from here only. Okay, so huge, uh, you know, stones they carry and drop it on the animals. And after the animal is dead, they consume it. Okay, that's how it began. Okay, then at a later point, what happened? Animals were, you know, very swift. Okay, some slow-moving, lazy animals you can kill through this means. Okay, what about those swift-moving animals like, you know, tiger, cheetah and all? It's very difficult to kill them. Then they came up with stone tools and all that. Okay, where they struck the animal with the spear. Okay, so striking from a very far off places and then we kill the animals. That's how it evolved. Okay, now, so at that point, Paleolithic times, we were hunters and gatherers. Okay, but at Neolithic times, Chalcolithic times, what happened? We started rearing animals, that is taking care of the animals. Okay, animal rearing means what? Using them in a sustainable manner. Are we that gracious to just, you know, feed something which is not useful to us? We are always a selfish, uh, you know, species. Right or not? So what did we rear them for? One thing is milk and milk products. And second thing is meat. Okay, so these are the two things that we started using it for. Fine. So now agriculture, and our agriculture also we started using, uh, you know, uh, calves, cows and uh, uh, buffaloes for your uh, plowing. Okay, so we have evidences from Rajasthan, Lothalala. We have some evidences where they have used the plowshare. What is a plowshare? Negilu. Right? Kannadali negilu antivala. So, yettu. Okay, it's called plowshare. Huh? Kalibangan. Yes, we have that. Okay? So, that was, that's what it means by agro pastoral community. Okay? That is, they had agriculture along with animal rearing. And agriculture means what? You need irrigation, water. Okay, so how did they get water? See, this is floodplain agriculture.
there are large river systems i mean this is the indus system okay na so where do they grow crops at the banks of river see actually this is the original flow of the river okay it is going somewhere there allalli channels develop maadkondidare okay that is diversion of rivers through construction of channels okay what is a channel what is a channel ha huh, that is nothing but making a way that is your channelizing the flow of river okay andre you let the flow of the river to go according to your convenience that's what it means by channel okay so look at this this actually wouldn't have existed okay they have made way for the water to come this way so that it can feed this crops this is what it means by flood plain agriculture what is flood plain male badaga definitely these channels will get filled yes so they are going to flood your land flood means water your land now don't you know misunderstand that flood andre that huge destruction uh, you know destructive way of water entering into your land no we are not talking about that huge amounts of water we are talking about the normal flooding of water okay na so the normal interaction between the land and water idella that is also called as flooding only okay so flooding of water to the land that's called as flood plain agriculture then the ivc is classified into three phases one is early phase second one is mature phase third one is late phase or later phase see 3500 to 2600 bc is the early phase this is our early phase take a look at it little keenly rivers kanasta idya those rivers that we spoke about see indus and five following rivers and then we are talking about mm, where we are mainly talking about mehergar okay you cannot forget these sites early phase and daga you should remember mehergar and then kod digi kalcha okay and then that one culture is important but saidu what is this this sites na app cut koli mehergar is not in india okay it is you you see the boundary of india this is the boundary okay na current boundary we are talking about okay so all those are outside india that is pakistan okay present day pakistan see dola vera is here in gujarat surkotada and then banavali kalibangan see here kalibangan is here rakhi garhi is also another important site ee sites la nap karbeku okay kalibangan banavali rakhi garhi okay and outside india you have to remember harappa and mohenjodaro that is a known thing and mehergar you should remember mehergar is very important because that is one site which is giving you continuous uh, you know idea about how ivc existed all three phases generally in this phase early phase early you will see core digital culture and these sites being important and do you see this uh, you know uh, orange area yes that will start spreading as you go ahead okay na so you have to remember the core area where ivc uh, artifacts exist of early period okay now when we have excavated these sites not these these sites this region okay mainly this region i'm talking about okay when we have excavated we believe that these are the oldest so we put them in the early phase got it yes this is our mature phase look expand agidya yeah. have they expanded yeah. yes which was only till here now it has come till down south this is the most active phase of indus valley civilization they were widespread okay nodi in the north they are till there afghanistan or touch agutte in the south they have come till maharashtra and here they have gone till pakistan there they have touched uttar pradesh this is the most active phase see now what do you see additional sites sutka jandar okay and then you will see mohenjodaro harappa chanhudaro you see yeah chanhudaro okay now dhola vera lothal and then rakhigarhi ropar manda 
and surko tada is also a little important because we've got evidences from this and see this culture you see no aharbanas kayata culture and then in the previous slide you saw kodigi culture here okay what exactly it means andre in each one of the places there existed different kinds of uh, art and craft okay pottery irbodu okay or their uh, techniques of developing the uh, equipment it could be okay tools okay tools it could be okay so that is how we distinguish between cultures okay different types of cultures you get that yes so that's how we see the mature phase then comes our late phase you see this they started vanishing from these regions they went further north they came further south this is where you see the later phase evidently till now okay this is not like absolute okay one thing is that you should always keep in mind is one thing that we have not you know yet deciphered their literature okay we don't know what it is so that way it is difficult to exactly say this is what it happened or this is where they existed one thing is we do not have literary evidences about them and second thing is that we have still a lot to learn about these people okay so for now it is understandable that they existed in this phase at in this places at the later phase you get that yes so look at this symmetry h culture or the burial structure na they are trying to refer here okay symmetry h culture jukhar culture okay rangpur culture okay that means that in each individual sites they had different type of you know life that's what it means by cultures okay look at the sites lothal dholavira these are all the later sites okay ropar alamgirpur see in the central in the mostly your north western part of india only they started you know slowly reducing okay the excavations do not give evidences for your later phase okay na from pakistan's we saw the slides ala that is what is written in words here i see in examination i want you to write it like this okay north south east and west just write down this and then edana you write whatever okay you want to write the same things in word so you save some words here and some time also got it yes so northern most point is jammu and kashmir north east is afghanistan okay and south is maharashtra west pakistan that is balochistan's province of pakistan and in the east you see uttar pradesh right uttar pradesh balochistan afghanistan and jammu and kashmir in the north and northeast south is maharashtra jammu and kashmir here you will see afghanistan this is pakistan's baloch balochi province this is maharashtra and this is up if in case you have to save some time this is the easiest way of representation got it yes so this is the extent of ivc and mention only important sites okay i want this outline mention harappa mehergarh mohenjodaro okay this is mohenjodaro and this is harappa kalibangan see harappa and kalibangan just beside each other one aache irutte one olage irutte remember that okay and then uh, you can also easily write lothal and dholavira yeah kalibangan is all this mount if five sites mentioned madre i am very much happy harappa mohenjodaro dholavira lothal and kalibangan 